In this video I'm going to talk about some of the different properties of rigid bodies in Havoc physics. In previous videos we've seen how to create rigid bodies, and you've probably noticed that they have a lot of different attributes that control the way they move and interact with each other. There's too many to cover in one video, so I'm just going to focus on a few that are used very commonly that you can see listed here. Each of these properties can be passed to the rigid body constructor in HKP rigid body C info, and can also be changed with a setter function on the HKP rigid body. I'll start with motion type, which determines how the body is integrated. This line of code sets the motion type for a rigid body, and if we take a look at this enumeration, you can see there's several different options, but most of the time there's only three of these that you really have to think about, which are dynamic, fixed, and keyframed. Motion dynamic creates a regular moving body. It can move around and be pushed by collisions and constraints, and dynamic is the default, so if you don't explicitly set a motion type, this is what you get. Motion fixed creates a body that can't move at all, so it doesn't even get integrated. And motion keyframed is kind of in between. It does get integrated, so you can set its velocity and it will move, but it's not affected by collisions. So in this sense, you can think of both keyframed and fixed bodies as being objects of infinite mass. To show an example of each of the motion types, I've set up a demo. So here the yellow boxes are dynamic. You can see they move, they get pushed around. Um, the blue floor is fixed, so it doesn't move at all, even though the yellow boxes are currently applying force to it. And the red ball is keyframed, so it does move, but it doesn't get affected by the collisions it's having with the yellow boxes. So, as you can see, motion type is a really fundamental property. All of these three types of objects are really different from each other, so you'll use this all the time when you're setting up your simulation. Another property that you'll use very frequently is mass. You're probably familiar with the equation force equals mass times acceleration, which tells us that the greater an object's mass, the more force is required to accelerate it. And of course, the same holds true in Havoc. This demo shows how mass affects the way that rigid bodies react to collisions. I've set up six spheres, and each is labeled with its mass in kilograms, which is the unit that Havoc uses. All of the spheres on the left weigh one kilogram, but on the right they range from 0.1 to 10 kilograms. When they collide, all at the same speed, the lightest sphere moves faster while the heaviest sphere moves slower. Now I just said that Mass determines how hard it is to move a body, but to be more specific, I was talking about linear motion. Angular motion is different, and for that, there's an analogous concept called inertia that determines how hard it is to rotate a body about any axis. In real life, an object's inertia is determined by the distribution of its mass in space. For example, a long, thin object is easier to rotate about its long axis than the other axes, because the mass is closer to the long axis and travels a shorter distance when the object is rotated that way. In Havoc, there are utilities to calculate the inertia of a rigid body from its mass and shape, but you can also control it independently, and that's what I've done in this demo. The setup here is we have five boxes that are identical in shape, mass, and position, but with inertias scaled to different values. The center box has its inertia calculated normally, while the closer ones have more inertia and the farther ones have less. When I drop identical spheres on each of them, we can see that the boxes with less inertia spin faster. So inertia is commonly increased in order to make bodies more stable by reducing their angular velocity or to restrict rotation about a particular axis when modeling a body like a spinning top. Another way to control the velocity of bodies is damping, which slows bodies down in proportion to how fast they're currently moving. For example, if you give a body a damping value of 0.1, it will lose about 10% of its velocity per second, so it's not losing speed at the fixed rate. The faster it's moving, the faster it loses velocity. In this demo, I have five spheres, all launched with the same initial velocity, but they have different damping values, and we see that the ones with more damping lose their speed sooner and travel a shorter distance. Damping can be used to approximate the effects of air resistance, and it'll make bodies come to rest more quickly and generally remove energy from the system. Next, I'm going to show you a couple of properties that affect the way that bodies behave in collision with each other, and first will be friction. Friction determines a body's resistance against sliding along the surface of another body. You can control the strength of this resistance, and normally it's going to be a value between 0 and 1, where higher values produce more resistance. And the actual effect you get depends on the friction of both bodies in contact with each other. And in this demo, we have tiles with a range of different friction values, and that determines how quickly they slide down the slope, with lower friction tiles moving faster. Friction is commonly used to model objects made of different materials. For example, ice is slippery and would have low friction, while rubber grips and would have high friction. Lastly, restitution is another property that affects how bodies behave when they contact each other. When two objects collide, they lose some energy. For example, if you drop a ball on the ground, it won't bounce back up to the same height that you dropped it from because it lost energy when it hit the ground. Restitution controls how much energy is lost. It's normally set to a value between 0 and 1, where higher values mean more energy being preserved. This demo shows spheres with a range of different restitution values, and the ones at the right end with higher restitution bounce higher and longer. 
Like friction, restitution is commonly used to model different types of materials. So we've looked at motion type, mass, inertia, damping, friction, and restitution. And these properties are used all the time in physics simulations to give each rigid body just the right behavior. Now that you know what they do, a good next step would be to spend some time experimenting with them and try to get a feel for how to get the results you want from them.